Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome, this is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Today, Andrew and I are going to talk about the challenges of making martial arts your profession. There's one in particular we're really going to talk about, but I'm sure we'll we'll find others. So we'll It'll pluralize it. Yeah. Challenges. No Z, those are S's. If you're new to this show, welcome. Thanks for coming by. What we do here on Martial Arts Radio, we produce a show a couple times a week for you, the traditional martial artists of the world, to hopefully find value in. We are doing that with a few, there are three kind of pillars, three three legs to the stool as a four-legged stool. For the microphone. Pretend, pretend it's three. Connect, educate, and entertain. Some episodes, you're going to learn stuff. Some episodes, you're going to have fun. Some episodes, you're going to hear about a person or a thing that you want to go deeper on. Mm -hmm. Our best episodes, we're going to do all three. And we do that because we love traditional martial arts. We have a belief here at Whistlekick that martial arts makes people better. And we have a goal of getting everyone to train for at least six months at some point in their life. If our mission means something to you, there are a lot of ways you can help us out. You can buy stuff at our store, whistlekick.com. You could support our Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. You could share episodes, buy books. There's so many things that you can do. And if you want the entire list, whistlekick.com slash family. You're not going to find a link to that anywhere. you got to type it in. But if you do type it in, we give you everything that you can do to help us out. And why do we put a little bit of a roadblock in front of it for you? Because we know the people who are going to take that step are going to find the most value in that page on our website, whistlekick.com slash family. If you've never been there, you should probably go there. We update it at least once a week. So, mm. Andrew, yeah, being a professional martial artist doesn't necessarily mean being a professional martial arts instructor or school mm -hmm. owner. Yeah, I would consider myself a professional martial artist. Uh, a lot of stunt people are professional mm -hmm. martial artists. I would not consider myself a professional martial artist. Uh, you've got people who are employed in, in marketing for martial mm -hmm. arts schools that sure. are professionally in the martial arts industry. And, yeah. and, and that's that's probably the more accurate way of describing it, yeah. but that makes for a really lame title. When we talk about being professionally in a certain industry, and we're going to talk about martial arts, but a lot of what we're going to say could equally apply to any anything else. You know, if you were professionally in the, um, I don't know, what's another example? The firearms industry or the uh, basketball industry industry mm -hmm. or in the world of culinary, right? All of those worlds have their own cultures. Martial arts absolutely has a culture. Yep. We, we are all part of it, whether we know it or not, we're immersed in it. And that culture has momentum. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the momentum of that culture doesn't jive with what you believe or what you are trying to do. Very true. And it creates a conflict. Yep. And we do, a, we do a really good job here, I think, of hiding those conflicts we try. from our audience. Yeah. I never want people to know about the back channel discussions that we have to have to make sure that we are both holding to our integrity as a collection of individuals, mm -hmm. as well as the organization and the opposition that we receive from individuals and other organizations. They don't need to know that stuff. They don't need to know that mm -hmm. stuff. It is not relevant. And if we do our job right, you never notice. Yeah. We work really hard and, and we have discussions. In fact, uh, was it last week or week before? You and I went back and forth on something. Yep. Mm -hmm. That, you know, I'm glad that the, t that the team, that we have this dynamic that we can Argue suggests that it was loud. It wasn't loud. Yeah, we yeah, had yeah. a disagreement. Mm -hmm, yep. And we talked it out over the course <coughs> of several days. A couple days, yep. Because there was some momentum mm -hmm. that was relevant, some of it being internally to whistle kick, something that we really have never done that you wanted to do mm -hmm. versus a, a, a cultural element, a broader cultural element within society that we were trying to respect. Mm -hmm. And those two things were in conflict. Yep. 
And navigating that is not always easy. What made it easier? We like and respect each other and had differing opinions so we could figure something out. Yep, yep. Not everyone who is the head of an organization mm -hmm. has people in their circles that they like and respect that are willing to disagree with them. Yep. A lot of people that are heads of organizations surround themselves with, for lack of a better word, yes men. Yep. Or yes people. Yes people. <laughs> So it sounds silly, but you know, let's let's be, yeah, right. There, there is potentially another example. You know, how do you, how do you slice that language? Right, mm -hmm. like we're not going there, but yeah, yep. more yep. conversation. I have said from day one, there will likely be a time that if Whistlekit goes the way it's supposed to, that people will be yesing me mm -hmm. on the sides, and I work hard <coughs> to try to recognize who those people are and make sure I have other people who disagree with me. Yeah. Because I need to hear those other perspectives and we all need to hear those other perspectives. And there's such a martial arts attitude there, right? How do we get better by being around people who are better, who challenge us, who yeah. disagree with us? And, I mean, punch us in the face when we don't block. Well, and there's a great quote that if everyone in the same room is thinking the same thing, someone's not thinking. Mm, that's a great it's just, point. It's the same sort of analogy. It's a great point. Now, when I pitched this idea to you to ha have this conversation, there was a very specific example that came up. And the interesting thing about this example is it's hypothetical, but it's one that has ridden in the back of my mind mm. for 25 plus years. For you specifically? For me personally. Okay, yep. The idea that you have a, an individual who has a martial arts school, they teach professionally, meaning they receive money for it. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's some of their income. Maybe it's all of their income. Mm -hmm. And they are engaged in a school where I think like most schools, they charge some kind of fee around rank. Some schools they charge, you know, they mark up the belts and the test is free. Some schools they charge for the test, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. and their hot water heater breaks. And they've got somebody who is on the verge of testing and they really know that person should wait a month or mm -hmm. the next testing cycle or whatever it is. Yep. And they're looking at their broken hot water heater and their maxed out credit card and they're wondering what to do. On the one hand, I would like to be able to take a hot shower yep. at home. On the other hand, I really think this student would benefit from staying where they are, from sticking around where they are just for a little bit longer. Now, we know what the decision of integrity is there. You make the student wait. Mm -hmm. But what if it's not just that instructor's hot showers that are at risk? What if it is instead not a hot water heater but a medical insurance payment. Sure. Or and, they, and they've got a kid that house. is prone to something. Yeah. yeah. Right? We could come up with a whole <laughs> bunch of examples. And you could easily come up with specific rejections of each and every one. You shouldn't have let it get that bad. You should have been better at marketing your school. You should have, should have, could have, would have. Doesn't matter. Mm hmm Right, Because we've all been in a rough spot at some point. We've all had circumstances. Uh, and, and sometimes those circumstances lead us to wonderful things. Yep. But most of us are asked to compromise things every day. We are asked to compromise our integrity. I believe the biggest challenge to a someone who is rooted in the martial arts professionally is being asked to compromise their integrity as it relates to martial arts. Yeah. And I, and I think, I think it happens more often than people want to recognize. I think, I think there are very small occurrences constantly. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and another example using the same sort of analogy that you not, not analogy, the same scenario you put yeah. forward is, Maybe you have a student that it, you can tell looking at them that they're starting to get bored. 
But if you gave them this little, you dangle this little carrot, like, oh, you know what? You can test next month. Maybe they'll stick around, even if they're not ready. But you need that person's income in order to pay more. What if that person's part of a family of five and you have a school that's yep. 25 students? Yep. And one of them is your second highest ranked student. And sometimes they take class mm -hmm. so you can pick up an extra shift at the restaurant. Yep. Right. There are so many examples we could come up with, and a lot of them I've seen. I'm sure. And that's tough. Now, the, I think it's important for us to say here, because we both recognize that this is difficult, and because we both recognize that my way and your way, they're not always exactly the same way, mm -hmm. and thus they are not right. Yeah. We all, I believe, we all have our own <coughs> ethical code, our own definition of what integrity looks like. In a perfect world, your integrity is not subject to other people's influences. Mm -hmm. But we don't live in a perfect world. We don't. And our integrity is subject to the influences of others. For example... Let's take that hypothetical, not, not the egregious situation of health insurance, mortgage, but the hot water heater. Because mm -hmm. honestly, in the back of my head, it's always been the hot water heater. I don't <laughs> know why. What if, not in addition to hot water heater, we wrap in what you said. I'm going to lose that student. Mm -hmm. So now, if I make the decision that is rooted in integrity, I'm not only out the hot water heater and I'm taking cold showers, but I'm losing a student mm -hmm. or three students or five students. Yep. Would I rather be perfectly <clears throat> principled and have a school that loses money yeah. or folds or on the other side, maybe I compromise a little bit and I can continue to teach because I believe that if people come to class, they're going to get some value out of it and I'm going to make them a little better. Yeah. Which is the more important benefit for me, for that person, for the school overall, for the world? If I compromise my integrity a bit, my hot water heater fixes, mm -hmm. if it gets fixed, my school remains and I can continue teaching the good things. To other students. To other students. If my school folds, how many students are never going to learn what I'm teaching and derive the benefit? How do I stack up? Or, or balance that one person not quite getting the perfect illustration of my integrity and on the other side dozens hundreds maybe even thousands of students in my hot water heater if we put those on two scales it really depends how much you value integrity yeah yeah, and, and I think it's important to note that there's no right answer. There is no right answer. You know, like this is, it's a difficult, challenging position. There's a, a, a line, and there is a quote, I don't remember it word for word. Abraham Lincoln. Mm -hmm. Okay. See, 16th, 13th, 16th president? 16th. 16th, thank you. I've never had a policy. I've just always done what seemed right at the time. Hmm. My... I'm, I'm pretty confident I don't have all the words right, but the sentiment's there. And I think that that's what I personally fall back to. Yeah. So let me throw some examples out. And if you have others, you know, feel free to throw them out. Mm -hmm. if, you're, mm -hmm. if you're confident, I'm okay with sharing them. <laughs> we get people who want to come on our show all the time. I don't even forward you all of them anymore because so many of them are just so brutally not our audience. Yeah. Like, like the... Like the mold person. There's somebody who really wants to come on our show and talk about mold mitigation. And I and I write back periodically because we've received this request many times. This is not the right audience. Yeah. 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 Stop spamming us. But we have plenty of others that are far more accurate. People who come out of the MMA space. Mm -hmm. But they don't have a traditional background. That's one of the thing, one of the boxes we drew at the very beginning of the show when it was just yep. me. They have to be rooted in traditional martial arts 
or be presenting something that is incredibly important for traditional martial arts. Yeah. Even if they don't do it now, they have to have done it. Or, you know, I, I think of the case of, of uh, Gary Rinal, who talked about not icing. Yep, right? sure. Gary, if I remember correctly, had no, no training, no yeah. martial arts background. But it was a message that I felt was so critical mm -hmm. for martial yep. artists to hear. We brought him on the show. Yep. Okay. Um, if I remember correctly, John Hurwitz of Cobra Kai. Mm -hmm. John came on the show. Great episode. We had a wonderful conversation. Yep. John does not train. John loved the Karate Kid movies. Yeah. And wanted to put together Cobra Kai and did. And so we brought him on the show and we had a good conversation because a lot of martial artists are involved in martial arts because of what Karate Kid was. Absolutely. And we know Cobra Kai has some run, right? So it's it's an interesting box. It doesn't have we could come up with a whole bunch of criteria. And at the very beginning, I would have said, actually I did, you have to be a black belt or equivalent. Mm -hmm. That was an early thing because in the first 10 episodes, the weakest episode I felt was someone who had not been training long enough. They had an interesting story, mm -hmm. but they didn't have enough time in the front of a room to be confident on the show. Now we've since broken that plenty of times. Yeah, yeah. But we've learned how to spot it. Exactly. Yeah. How do we how do we spot this person? So it's an example of we had something that I would have called the integrity of the show that we later adjusted. Mm -hmm. Not because we were softening the integrity, but because we had a better way of defining it. Yeah, yeah. Is integrity, and this is the, and this is the root of it, right? This is what we're talking about at the heart of this episode. Is the integrity in the specific instance, or is it in the overall application of what is being done and will be done in the future? And I. I primarily majored in computer science in college, but uh, we had a very interesting way of sneaking a double major in there with philosophy with very few classes. So I basically took like three more classes and I double majored in philosophy. I love philosophical discussion. Anybody who's been around with this show or knows me personally knows that. Yep. And there are some interesting philosophical discussions that we can ask. We, it, it's, it becomes a lot clearer when we take it to extremes. Would you harm this one person to save these two people from harm? Oh, I don't know, Jeremy. That's kind of tough. Would you harm this one person to save these million people from harm? Whew, yeah. I'm going to need a lot of therapy. Yep, yep. And we could probably concoct a scenario where, this, where the answer is no, but on the surface, most of us are going to say, yeah. Yeah, yep. Am I going to compromise the martial arts experience of this one person to benefit to benefit else. absolutely everyone else, including me? Mm. Whew. It's a tough call. Yeah. Other ways that this surfaces in what we do. We are not pay to play. I have never, and I continue to say this when I when I sense that there may be newer listeners to the show, <clears throat> especially on a Monday episode. Yeah thinking, this sounds awfully commercial. Did they pay to be on here? Because let's face it, there are podcasts that are what I call pay to play. And I've watched what's happened to them. We do not do that. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to absolutely promise we never do that, but I don't see a future where we do that. We have plenty of monetization plans, and that's not one of them. We have people who reach out, and they're like, hey... We should do this thing together. And I look at what they've done, and I'm like, they're really good at doing commercial things. Mm. They're pretty good at making money. I don't want to be affiliated with them. Yeah, They're kind of slimy. They're kind of gross. I feel like they've compromised their integrity such that the primary thing, the, the highest priority, is their ability to put money in their pocket on a short or medium-term basis, not even long-term. Because mm -hmm. if, you, if you're financially successful long-term, you've probably got some integrity because otherwise people stop showing up. Uh, can you think of anything else? Th those are the main ways. Those are the main ways. I mean, I, I mean, we get a lot of people that contact us to come on the show that have written books mm -hmm. and, and, you know, they are totally upfront and honest that, you know, they want to cut or they even want to if, shill their book. And even if they're not totally upfront and honest, we can read between the lines. Yeah. They want to come on the show because they want to sell their book. And I get that. And, no problem. Um, 
but I think we do a good job of making their episode not about that. And and here's here's something that happens pre-show or even you know I don't I don't know all the details of what you talk to guests about, but I'll tell them point blank. I know you have a book. I know you want to sell the book. Let me tell you the irony of what will happen if you spend the whole time talking about your book. Nobody's going to engage, feel a connection with you. They're not going to buy your book. Yep. I recognize that you want to sell your book. So let's focus on you. And if there's an organic moment where talking about the book comes mm -hmm. up, mm -hmm. we'll go there. If not, when we get to the back end, we'll make sure I will bring it up. And you've got a book. And if you've been listening a long time, you've heard me say yeah. that. Yeah. You're you're more because that way the audience is more engaged in being interested in that person, more likely to buy the book. But we don't let you know, but people don't come on the show to pay us to come on and shield their book. That just doesn't happen. There's also never been a case, and we've had this offer multiple times. Okay, I'll give you a discount code, and if your audience buys it, mm. we'll throw you a kickback. Nope. Yep. I don't want it. So if you're going to give them 10% and you want to give me 10%, I want you to give them 20% and I want zero. Yeah. Because I would rather because that lines up better with our values. I want to make no money. Because what happens if that person does that and then we make a bunch of money and then they want to come back on the show to do it again? You feel obligated. Now to. I'm feeling pressured, right? Yeah. Like and and that's a very clear mm -hmm. cut and dry. It's also we've said from the beginning, this show is meant to bring people in to what we do yeah. and we monetize in other ways. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to worry about this being profitable. Exactly. Um, we do occasionally get authors afterwards will send us a copy of their book. Yep. Um, nine, I mean, everyone that's happened for me, I've purchased them. Like they sent it to me, but I purchased one. Like, cool. you know, I mean, I appreciate that, but I, I don't, I, this sound will sound weird, but I think you guys will, will get it. Like, I don't want to feel beholden to them. I don't want them to feel like that I have to owe them. But I don't want to feel like I owe them something. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I get that. And they should be paid for their work. Now, you might be saying, okay, you're talking a lot about you, Jeremy, as being a professional in the martial arts world. What about some other examples? I'm actually being careful about examples. Mm. Because I don't – school owners easy because we all know a bunch of school owners. Yep, yep. There are other examples that I could make, other industries, other ways of being involved that you could look at and say, oh, I wonder if Jeremy's talking about this person. Mm. I don't want that. Yeah, yeah. Because we've spent the entire conversation here talking about how difficult this is yeah. and how much pressure there is to do this. And I don't want people to think that I disregard those challenges. Mm -hmm. Now, are there people out there who are doing things professionally in the martial arts world that I have absolutely zero respect for? Yep. Plenty of them. I've done business with some of them. There's one person right now. I, if I could unsubscribe from knowing them, I would. Someone. I hope it's not me. It's not. You. Okay, good. Whew. Someone who's been around for a long time. Someone who was engaged professionally. Someone who was a high-ranking martial artist, mm -hmm. and just flat out lied to me on a number of cases mm -hmm. and got money out of me because in the early days, I thought if you were a high ranking martial artist, you were also a good person. Not always. And that bumps me out. Yep. Yep. I get it. So what do you do with this information? First off, you recognize that I'm not judging you. If you are, a professional in the martial arts world, or you aspire to be a professional in the martial arts world, rather than feeling judged, I hope you recognize that I see the challenges that you are all facing. It's difficult. It is difficult. It sucks. In a perfect world, we would just be able to do the thing that we want to do, and we wouldn't be tempted, and we wouldn't have 
questions of whether to or have we compromised our integrity and wouldn't if, exist. If only we lived in a perfect world. But at the same time, if we apply martial arts principles to being a professional in the martial arts world, this is how we get better. It's how we understand ourselves. It's how we understand what we're trying to do and why we're trying to do it. Because that is also critical. We speak often on this show and within Whistlekick about how martial arts makes people better, how it makes them better versions of themselves, etc. Iron sharpens iron, etc. It is only logical that if you are going to take martial arts and you are going to jump into it with both feet, not just as a practitioner, but as a professional, that you will continue to derive lessons from that immersion. Though there are exceptions to every rule. Like the person, the high-ranking person that... Oh, there are lessons. They just failed them. Oh, okay. Fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll buy that. You can lead a horse to water. But you can't make him drink. You can give people the opportunity to make the right decision. Doesn't mean they're going to do it. Yeah. You hope they do. They don't always. Okay. This is one of those episodes that I'm, I'm wondering if there's a bunch of private feedback. There may be a bunch of <laughs> people out there thinking... Jeremy, I want to go deeper on this. I want to talk to you about this. I'm having an issue with this thing that I saw happen at my school. Can you give me some feedback? We don't talk about this often. I will write back to almost every email I get. We are, we are past the point where I write back to absolutely every email. But it is almost every email. And I still read them. Once in a while, I get somebody who is wasting my time. And I don't mean wasting my time with a question. I mean... They write to me and it's the seventh time they've written to me and they want to know about our inventory on a certain product. And instead of going to the website and looking mm. at inventory, yeah, yeah. they write to me in a 16 paragraph essay yeah. Yeah. about why they want to borrow, why they want to buy two pairs of shin guards. And you know what? That's a terrible example because I would still reply back to that <laughs> because if somebody wants to buy something, but we get the idea. There, there are rare example, rare exceptions. But the point being, if you want to reach out to me, Jeremy at whistlekick.com, I'm happy to hear your feedback. I'm happy to hear your questions, your concerns. This is an important discussion, and it's an important discussion that we all have together. So if you're not having it with me or Andrew at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, I hope you're having it with your instructor, with your students, with your spouse, with your friends, your training partners, or even just with yourself. Integrity is good. We live in a time where integrity is being compromised at a faster rate than I could have ever imagined. And when I look at who I think has the best chance of providing some light, it's our community. And I hope that you are willing to take that responsibility seriously. It's important. I agree. Anything else to add? Nope. All right. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for watching or listening. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you want to go deeper on this or any other episode, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com is the place to go. Whistlekick.com is where you're going to go to pick up a couple pairs of shin guards or anything else that we have from... Or a mug. Or, or a mug from shirts to hats to training programs to event registrations. There's so much going on over there. It's also the place to find all the other things that we work on beyond the show because it's a lot more than just this show. I said training programs. We've got those. Strength, speed, conditioning, flexibility. The flexibility one's even free. And if you want to support us beyond maybe buying something, you could join our Patreon for as little as $2 a month. You could tell somebody else about the work that we do, maybe share this episode. Or you can check out the family page, whistlekick.com slash family. We update it once a week with some cool behind the scenes stuff, as well as all the ways you can help support us in our mission to connect, educate, and entertain. Our social media is at whistlekick, everywhere you could think of. And I think that takes us to the end. Yeah. Yeah. All right, until next time, train, train hard, hard, smile, and, and have, have a great day. day.